Hey everyone, David Bomble here again at the DevNet offices in San Jose. We've got members of the DevNet team here and I'm going to do a bad job introducing them. So I'll let them introduce themselves and I mean, you guys have been telling me this machine learning stuff is actually real. I hear all these stories, you know, it's like just a fad, doesn't exist, won't work. So before you hit me, I'll let you guys like tell us the truth. So go for it guys, introduce yourselves, tell us about machine learning. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Patrick Real. I'm a software engineer with Cisco DevNet. Uh, hi, I'm Ashutosh Malikankar. I'm principal, a principal engineer with Cisco DevNet as well. And uh, I lead what we call as DevNet co-creations, where we work with our customers, partners, and our internal stakeholders. Uh, as David actually asked, right, you know, like what's Cisco doing for uh, in the machine learning area, right? There are multiple, lot of, lot of people don't know what, what Cisco is, has been doing. Uh, so right from like our products, our security products, uh, which actually like if people don't know, like it gets the number of queries or the number of threats that we actually detect uh, on the live platform is huge. It's even huge, like bigger than like what Google gets, uh, the number of queries that oh, it wow. gets. So, you know, that's, that's the power of our uh, security platform. And uh, over there, like what's happening is like we have hackers, we have machine learning uh, engineers, we have research scientists who are constantly looking at that data and building out new algorithms to like make sure that those security threats uh, don't, I mean, you take care of those threats. Uh, so that's one. The second, second place where like, you know, we've been looking at uh, is like our uh, DNA or intent-based networking uh, space, right? So can you imagine, right? You know, you're looking at encrypted traffic, but still we are able to tell what type of application is there, whether there is a virus in that traffic. So right from the deep learning uh, packet inspection to like our ASICs are able to do machine learning and figure out uh, that. Oh, wow. Uh, so that's, that's the second. The third one is like in the collaboration space, uh, like, you know, one of the things that like uh, our, our, like, you know, our Spark boards or our WebEx team boards or endpoints, they have something called as cognitive technology where they are able to recognize a face and make sure like, you know, or do occupancy testing. So like if you are in a room, they can tell like there are five people in this room and you can take actions like, hey, get the AC up uh, or, you know, like turn the lights on. So those yeah. kind of things can be done as well. Uh, and apart from that, uh, like we have other platforms like MindMeld, uh, which is like the Alexa version of Cisco. Like, okay. uh, so we can actually do like, hey, hey WebEx. And uh, it'll, there you go, you see it. Oh, there you go, that was a live demo. Yeah, well, that then. was a live demo, right? So that's what happens, cancel please. So that's what happens, right? You know, like you can actually feel uh, this is all machine learning and AI in, in, in the real world. And in DevNet, uh, we've been actually looking at it from multiple angles. So one is like our ML uh, C480 platform uh, is, is a data center platform where it has eight GPUs. And it is, it is a, a big, I, I don't know whether I should say that, but it's a big kick-ass platform. You can uh, say. Okay, uh, but it, it's really good because like as a, a machine learning uh, like researcher, I want to build like uh, models quickly, right? You don't want to like put in a job and like wait for three days and come back. Uh, versus like this, the, the statistics that we saw in, in GTC when our Cisco guys presented, they said, now every night they're able to look at the telemetry data and build new models every day. So that's the kind of power that it will give in, uh, give for, for, for these developers. Uh, so that's, and we are, we actually have a sandbox uh, on DevNet, which you could reserve anytime. Uh, so literally, oh, wow. yeah, so it's, it's a big platform to have for like four hour time slots or eight hour time slots. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, the second thing is that we, we've been working with uh, alongside our partners like NVIDIA and we, we are coming up with like new use cases, both from our cloud uh, center, like, you know, CCP platform. Uh, what what it is is essentially it's a Kubernetes uh, in the in the private data cloud, data center, 
and uh, use cases like hey i want to detect uh, anomalies i want to detect objects but i don't want to send it into the cloud so we've done some like prototyping and some use cases for our retailers uh, and that's one demo that like you know we could show maybe not today but like in the future that'd be great uh, and then uh, patrick also he's 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 a he's a budding machine learning engineer and he's been like really toying with machine learning a lot so patrick why don't you tell what you've been doing yeah so one of the things that we've done with machine learning inside of demnet we had a csr project so that's a corporate social responsibility project and we were working with the department of labor and the va and we were tasked with being able to figure out whether or not we could use machine learning or ai to help veterans and then also existing military personnel transition from a military career out to a civilian career so one of the things that we came up with was being able to actually translate the military occupational codes that a military personnel has and translate that into a corresponding civilian role. So what I have here you can see is actually a live demo of something that's being used by one of our partners here, which is just an API call, which actually just takes in a string. In this case, it's gonna be a, an arbitrary job title. So this would be software engineer cloud. We will make this API call and what will come back actually will be a crosswalk of military occupational codes that would be relevant skills that that individual had learned in the military that would actually correlate to that actual job title. Oh, wow. So you can see here for a software engineer cloud, these would be the military occupational codes that would be relevant for it. And, and this is from out of machine learning, is that right? So yes, this is using natural language processing, uh, and the, da the data that we were using to actually build these models was provided by the VA and the Department of Labor. So this is this is a CSR project. Uh, it got folded into a bigger platform, uh, where now uh, like people who are coming out of the military or the services are able to go onto that platform and say, hey, you know, like these are my skills. Uh, what are the civilian jobs that I can get? And uh, we are also working with uh, the NetAcad team. I mean, it's part of the NetAcad. Yeah, uh, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a branch of the NetAcad uh, offering that they provide for students and alumni that uh, basically want to find jobs inside of either Cisco or the Cisco ecosystem. So you showed us there, that's a REST API call or something that's being, being used, or what's going on in the background? So yeah, so this is just a REST API call. Uh, it's just a post that's being sent to this URL right here. And what actually is happening is that there is a cron job that's happening once a day where yeah. this partner is actually collecting a thousands and thousands of job postings that are basically being aggregated by other partners and customers that want to have job postings on their site. The problem is, is actually translating that job posting to an occupational category. So our machine learning is actually taking that job title, doing the translation to an occupational category. So in this case, it could be something specific such as computer and mathematical occupations with a certainty of 67%. And then what we do then is we actually crosswalk that with the military occupational codes so this that like correspond this to that occupational category. Sorry, man, this is the 67% probability that the machine machine learning has got it this right. This is, is the right? confidence level, yes. Okay. So in other words, you like are you just like taking in these job postings and then the machine learning is having to read it or something and then figure out where it goes? So basically it's just doing NLP on the job title itself. Okay. And then it's basically doing inference and it's building out the the crosswalk from that job title itself. So in other words the guy submitting the jobs, the companies should I say submitting the jobs they don't know what these codes are. They just the them. aggregation system itself is oblivious to that. So we're providing this kind of matching system that basically provides that information for them. And and all of that's based on machine learning. Yeah. Yes. That's really cool. Yeah. So that that was a way for us to like actually also give back to the community. Yeah. Uh, and at the same time, like uh, you know, like use some of the the learnings that we are having in machine learning to apply it to a real world problem as well. So tell me guys, is, is machine learning and AI real or is it still hype or is it hype? It, it is real, it is real. And like the more, the more you think about it, like machine learning is uh, like, it's gonna solve very cool problems, right? Yeah. Uh, and like I've been seeing like some use cases 
where like think about it you are i mean i think like adrian talked about uh, like navigation and making location services better yeah. now think about it right that if i were to actually have a route that is learned uh, and i keep on making that model better and better the next person who walks in will have better accuracy for navigation uh, right today that loop is not there uh, and with uh, with ml with uh, like the data like you know the infrastructure being better like wi-fi 6 and giving you low latency it can start driving those experiences to the end user as well so and cisco you mentioned like machine learning and asics and stuff like that and the like the the virus example is that yeah. is, is that sort of where the beginnings of machine learning are in the networking world correct correct and and yes that's correct and we that that's already out there yeah. i mean it's not like so but it's not, not on a paper or a PowerPoint, yeah. it's real. It's, it's real. being products being yes. used today by thousands of companies, yes. Yeah. So so that 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 is already out there, right? Uh, but the future is also like about telemetry. And the example I told you about, like, hey, you know, like uh, I, I have this whole data center and I have telemetry that's been streamed out, uh, but I want to make sense out of that telemetry. Uh, I want to detect anomalies. I want to predict that this this server is actually going to go down. Uh, those kind of use cases are being worked in, worked out by our, our engineers. Uh, and people are building, we've seen prototypes, we've seen real world uh, examples of that as well. So the big question is, okay, machine learning, clever networks, what happens to network engineers? Oh, so the thing is it like- Will I lose my job? No, absolutely not, right? Because uh, the application that, like, you know, I talked about telemetry, yeah. right? Uh, now, the telemetry, like, who, like, is being streamed out through an application that was written on either the switch or the router, right? So, first of all, that's, that's one side of it. Now, the second side of it is that as a, you still, you still need to build your network, right? Uh, that's, that still continues to go on. Yeah. Uh, what what probably will start changing is the job profile, right? You know, like you you're not just going to be doing CLI anymore, but you'll be using scripting to make make those things happen, and that's what DevNet is all about, right? We we want to see that transition happen because the world is just is no more just a CLI based world, right? And uh, with automation, network automation, we'll be able to like do st uh, like telemetry, we'll be able to do statistics. Even like, you know, we need experts who understand like what that telemetry means, uh, because uh, at the end of the day, a machine learning person is a machine learning person. Yeah. But a networking person has the real knowledge and he will be able to say this is this is the label that needs to be there. Uh, this is what will happen uh, for that data. And this is what I should be seeing. So, you know, like you need that expertise as well. So. So Patrick, I mean, I'm going to put you on the spot now. Sure. What's your background? Are you like a developer or are you like a network engineer? So my background is completely software engineering. Okay. Uh, the little amount of networking that I've learned uh, has been here on the job with the help of Adrian over there. Um, and then I also have a background in machine learning. So, so what, if, if someone wants to learn machine learning, have you got like any products that you'd recommend, books or stuff like that? How do you get started? So I would highly recommend taking some of the learning labs that we have on learninglabs.cisco.com, uh, developer.cisco.com slash learning. And I would take some of the learning labs there. There's some introductory content that will get you up to speed on the basics of machine learning. Uh, and there's also a bunch of content that's available uh, both on YouTube, uh, MIT, and Stanford that they provide for free. So we'll get the links from you guys. I'll put the links below the, this video because yeah, well, that'll be good. Yeah, what, one thing that like, you know, uh, is, is a stumbling block for a lot of people uh, when they hear machine learning and AI is the mathematics that's associated with exactly. it. Exactly. Okay. Uh, but I don't think that they have to be scared of that at all. Uh, the reason being like there are two parts to it. One is that you need to understand uh, like the algorithm and if you're actually like messing around with the algorithms, yes, then you need the mathematics for yeah. it. But then there is the other field of applied machine learning. And this is where like, you know, where you take the algorithm and make sure that it works in the environment. And remember you asked me, is it real? Yeah. The reason it is becoming real is because now we have kind of learned the art 
of applying machine learning to different fields. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, as Patrick said, you know, like you should be able to like take up like a course in Stanford, uh, maybe from uh, like in any of the universities. Udemy has like actually good courses, uh, so you could go in there. I learned my TensorFlow course from Udemy. So, oh, that's good. So Udemy is a good place to go. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I, I did that and then you, you actually get an overview of like a technology, right? And then for me, I'm a, I'm a very visual person. So like I looked at it and I said, okay, how do I apply this in my world, right? So I'm, I consider myself to be an applied machine learning guy and not a machine learning expert, right? Uh, or a, a data scientist. So here's another question. Do network engineers need to learn machine learning or is it just Cisco going to provide the tools that we just use or what, where do you see that going? I would I would think like, you know, network engineers really don't need to need to do it. But like, think about it this way, right? Uh, like, you know, I was I was again, this is a conversation that I had with Adrian, who who is in my mind, he's a CCIE, he's a networking guy, but he he himself is slowly moving towards becoming a software person, right? He, and it's not like he's losing his touch on networking. He still continues to do his networking things. But he recently like built an SD-WAN demo, for example, right? He actually built something where he was like saying, I want to build a backend for SD-WAN. Like I'm going to use the APIs and build a backend. And then he worked with the front end guys to build a whole solution, right? Now, the reason I'm telling you this is like it's about like the use case, right? When when a networking guy comes in and he says, oh, you know, like, can you predict uh, what kind of traffic is going to happen? Uh, can you tell me like in this stadium at on this this game, uh, do you think that uh, like there's going to be 60,000 people and he'll be able to tell what type of applications are going to be there. They can manage the networks better. So definitely like, you know, it's it will be very good to have that background and that analytical uh, thinking as well. We should get you here. So you come and join us, man. I, can, I think you must come in. Ah, these guys are doing a great job though. So. so you stand in the middle. Come here. Okay. So I think so, it's like anything else though. Uh, learning a new skill is going to be valuable for you regardless yeah. of what that skill is. Uh, machine learning uh, for a software engineer, myself, has definitely become very valuable in my opinion.